Hey everybody. Well, after years and years of service, my Quest DSL modem has quit working. It doesn't uh, post. I don't know about you, but whenever I see uh, issues with uh, electronics and, the, and they don't want to turn on, uh, the first thing I do is think of capacitors. Everything's dying from capacitors nowadays. And yeah, you go out and buy a new uh, DSL modem for around $80, but uh, I'll do my part and I'll check it out to see if I can't keep this one from hitting the landfill. Uh, you power it up, the power LED never turns green, meaning the processor in there isn't getting enough power in order to initialize the rest of the uh, modem. It doesn't matter what you do, I've uh, messed with it, it just turns red. So. I'm going to go ahead and pop it open and, and uh, hopefully it's, it's something simple like a, like a capacitor that's uh, bad. That was easy enough. Pop it out of there. And by golly, what do I see right off the bat? Okay. See that capacitor right there? The, the green cap behind the black one right there. Filmed up on that. And then the rest of them look okay, but I got another questionable one right there gonna be hard to see with that camera but that one right there doesn't look any good either so uh, let me get my uh, ESR meter out and uh, take a look at it okay here's a homebrew uh, ESR made meter I made uh, I'll, uh, found a schematic on the internet and it, it works quite well uh, I'll post a link to the site uh, at the bottom of the video Basically, it's just an AC ohmmeter. And right here is the one of the capacitors. I need to zero it out first here. This is just an old uh, Radio Shack trainer that I've had laying around for years. So I don't have a one milliamp meter, so I I use the one on here, and it works quite well. touchy there we go okay and uh, the best thing about this uh, little ESR meter is you're able to test them in circuit and I I actually built the ESR meter from just uh, parts I had laying around in my junk box which makes it even better rather than having to go out and buy one and let's see what we got here well that one tests good marvelous Test this one over here now. Uh oh, that one definitely shows it being bad. But uh, I'm concerned about the other one though too, the way it's bulged up. If it's not bad, it probably won't be long until it is. And it may be. directly shorted out too. So, uh, let me pop those two out. Okay, here's the one that tested uh, good for ESR in circuit. Let's see what happens now. And it... It's... Uh, several ohms off, um, showing several ohms resistance. But like I said, it's not uh, 
the way it's bulged up, I'm not even going to question it. I'm just going to replace it. And here's the other little one. And again, it shows a lot of resistance. That's probably 10 or 15 ohms resistance right there. This is a 4.7 ohm resistor. And the 0.8 on the meter. If you get a little better idea, that uh, 0.8 milliamps on a meter there, that's actually showing 5 ohms, five re relative to 5 ohms. Okay. And with this little one in circuit there, it's showing about 0.3 on a meter, which is a lot. It's probably close to 20 ohms of resistance through that little cap. And this is with the other cap that's a bad probes from touching here. This is hard to do one handed, let me tell you. There we go. Now you can see my meter is a 0.8. So that cap has almost 5 ohms of uh, ESR on it, equivalent series resistance. And uh, I, I don't didn't doubt it a bit uh, the way that dome was uh, popped up. So I think uh, I'll dig through my uh, parts box and uh, see if I can't find me uh, a couple of these caps. More than once, had a new component that was bad, and that sucks. So let's. Uh, Plug in the ESR meter again. Get it set out, get it zeroed out. There we go. Okay, here's the one I'd like to use. It's a thousand microfarad, 16 volt. I gotta collect these from scavenging them out of the broken equipment, new, old, all over. And that one looks good. I'm getting just under, just a tenth of an ohm. Looks very good. Just, uh, that's a good cap. And here's the 470. 10 volt, we're going to replace that 336 volt with. And he's also good. He's showing just a wee bit of resistance like the other one, maybe a tenth of an ohm. So we got our parts right there. I'm going to put this thousand mic back, back up, clean it up a little bit. Old flux getting in the way here. Keep everything as clean as we can. This is a. It's been a great little modem. I haven't had any any trouble with it whatsoever. I have a. I only have a seven meg uh, DSL line here, and it does quite well. sure the uh, polarity is correct on these caps. Silk screen, this board's laid out quite well. Okay, make sure the polarity is correct. Just snap it in there. There we go. Very good. So that uh, thousand microfarad cap, that was a pull, but this uh, 470, it looks like it's a brand new one. I got my soldering iron all warmed up, ready to go. New tin on it. Solder over here. See, you can't dab a little solder on those. With the tip.
Oh, very good. Let's snip the leads on this guy. Flux here a little bit. Maybe just got using rubbing alcohol 91% on a little Q-tip here. Just push that flux up off that solder. I went ahead and uh, off camera tested the rest of the caps just to make sure while I had this thing apart and they all tested good too. So I think we're back in business. So I'll snap it back in there and put the bottom on it briefly here before I put the screws in I do want to test it out. Plug it back up to the power supply here. Okay, and here we go. Oh, it looks better already. The orange light on the power LED is not turning red. Oh, it's success. It's starting to flash green. Processor's trying to boot the DSL. I don't have it plugged into my phone line. So it's not going to uh, load the DSL. But it's uh, it's definitely res resurrected, and again, it was those uh, those two shoddy caps that uh, was all a problem. You know, um, could have very easily uh, hit the landfill, but uh, you know, I just saved uh, saved myself about eighty bucks for a new motor. Okay, well, I've got it all put back together now. I'm gonna power it back on. I have the uh, phone line and the Ethernet line both connected sit here and watch it boot up to make sure everything goes. Looks good. DSL is now established and once I start talking to the server I should get my internet light popping up. And bingo, there we go, we're back in business. Thanks for watching.